Hello kids, let's start with our history subject, Chapter 2, India Before the Times of Shivaji Maharaj. Let's begin. We shall learn about the various ruling powers in India before the times of Shivaji Maharaj in this lesson. Various ruling powers existed in India during that period. Pal in the 8th century was a famous dynasty in Bengal. Dynasty means rulers of a country. In central India, the Gurjar Prathihar power spread up to Andhra, Kalinga, Vidarbha, West Kathiawar, Kanuj and Gujarat. Among the Rajput dynasties in North India, the Gahadwal and the Parma dynasties were the important ones. Among Rajput, Prithviraj Chauhan belonging to the Chauhan dynasty was a valiant king. Valiant means brave. In the first war of Tarai, Prithviraj Chauhan had defeated Muhammad Ghori. But Muhammad Ghori defeated Prithviraj Chauhan in the second war at Tarai. Raja Raj I and Rajendra I belonging to the Chola dynasty in Tamil Nadu were eminent rulers. Eminent means famous and respectable. The Cholas conquered the Maldives island and Sri Lanka using their naval strength. King Vishnuvardhan belonging to the Hoysal dynasty in Karnataka had conquered the whole of Karnataka. Inventions from Northwest Local dynasties like the Yadwas and Rasharkota ruled in Maharashtra. But invaders from the Northwest conquered the local dynasties there and established their own rule. Invaders means attackers. In the meanwhile, the Arab power had emerged in the Middle East. Arab rulers turned towards India to expand their empire. The Arab general Muhammad bin Qasim attacked the Sin province in the 8th century. Notwithstanding the resistance of King Dahir, he conquered the province of Sin. Due to this campaign, the Arabs came into political contact with India for the first time. In the period that followed, Turks, Afghans and Mughals from Central Asia came to India and established their powers here. In the 11th century CE, the Turks began to invade India. Expanding their territories, they reached the northwestern frontier of India. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni invaded India many times. In 1175 CE, in 1178 CE, Sultan Mahmud Ghori of Gohar from Afghanistan invaded India. He appointed Qutbuddin Abayk to look after the governance of the conquered territories in India. Later, after the death of, death of Mahmud Ghori in 1206 CE, Abayk began to rule the Indian territories under his rule independently. Abayk, who was initially a slave, became the ruler of Delhi. He died in 1210 CE. Ibrahim Lodi was the last Sultan. The Kingdom of Vijayanagar During the reign of Sultan Muhammad bin Tughluq of Delhi, there were many revolts in the south against them. From these revolts arose the formidable Vijayanagar and Bahamani kingdoms. The Bahamani Kingdom While Muhammad bin Tughluq was still reigning, some of his Sardar in the Deccan rose in rebellion against him. The leader of the Sardar, Hassan Gangu, defeated the army of the Sultan of Delhi. A new kingdom known as the Bahamani Kingdom came into existence in 1347 CE. Hassan Gangu became the first Sultan of the Bahamani Kingdom. He made the city of Gulbarga in Karnataka his capital. Mahmud Gavan
Mehmud Gawan was the chief wazir of the Bahmani kingdom. He was a good administrator. He strengthened the Bahmani kingdom. He started paying the soldiers their salaries in cash instead of through land grants. He brought discipline in the army. He introduced many reforms in the land revenue system. He opened a madrasa at Bidar for Arabic and Persian studies. In 1526 CE, the Sultan of Delhi came to an end. Mughal power was established there. Babur Babur was the founder of Mughal power. He was the king of Fergana in Central Asia in today's Uzbekistan. He had heard of the wealth in India, so he planned an invention of India. Invention means attack. The reigning Sultan of Delhi at that time was Ibrahim Lodi. Daulat Khan Lodi was the governor of Punjab under the Sultanate. The relationship between Ibrahim Lodi and Daulat Khan Lodi was strained. Daulat Khan Lodi invited Babur to march on India. After the death of Uday Singh, Maharana Pratap ascended the throne of Mewar. He continued the struggle for Mewar's existence. Till the very end, he struggled with Akbar to maintain his independence. He has became, become immortal in history due to his qualities of valor, courage, self-respect, sacrifice, etc. Chan Bibi The Mughals attacked Ahmadnagar, the capital of Nizam Shah's kingdom, in 1595 CE. The Mughal army put the fort of Ahmadnagar under siege. Chan Bibi, the capable daughter of Hussein Nizam Shah of Ahmadnagar, bravely defended the fort. At this time, there was an internal strife among the factions of the Sardar in Nizam Shahi's kingdom. Strife means friction, fight. Faction means divisions. This resulted in the murder of Chan Bibi. Later, the Mughals captured the fort of Ahmadnagar. But the Mughals could not bring the entire kingdom of Nizam Shahi under their control. Rani Durgavati Gondwana can broadly be said to compromise the eastern part of Vidharba, part of Madhya Pradesh, to its north. The western part of today's Chhattisgarh, northern part of Andhra Pradesh and the western part of Odisha. Durgavati, born in the Chandel Rajput dynasty, became the queen of Gondwana when she was married. She was an excellent administrator. The struggle of Gondwana, Queen Durgavati against the Mughals is important in medieval history. After her husband's death, Durgavati laid down her life while fighting against Akbar, but she did not surrender. Aurangzeb Aurangzeb became the emperor in 1658 CE. At this time, the Mughal Empire extended from Kashmir in the north up to Ahmadnagar in the south and from Kabul in the west up to Bengal in the east. To this, Aurangzeb added Assam in the east and the regions of Adil Shahi of Bijapur in the south and Qutub Shahi of Golgunda after he ended these kingdoms. Conflict with the Ahoms In the 13th century CE, the people of the Shan community settled down in the valley of river Brahmaputra. They established their kingdom there. They were locally known as Ahom people. While Aurangzeb ruled, the Ahoms had a prolonged struggle with the Mughals. The Mughals attacked the Ahoms region. The Ahoms united under the leadership of Gadadhar Sinha. Commander Lachit Borfokan gave an intense battle against the Mughals. The Ahoms used the gorilla technique in the conflict against the Mughals. It became impossible for Mughals to create a strong base in Assam. Conflict with the Sikh.
The ninth guru of the sixth guru, Tegh Bahadur, protested strongly against Aurangzeb's policy of religious intolerance. Aurangzeb imprisoned him and beheaded him in 1675 CE. After him, Guru Gobind Singh became the guru of the Sikh. Conflict with the Rajputs Akbar had secured the cooperation of Rajput with his policy of amic amicable relations. Aurangzeb could not obtain the cooperation of Rajputs. After the death of Rana Jaswan Singh of Marwad, Aurangzeb annexed his kingdom to the Mughal Empire. Annexed means addition. Conflict with the Marathas In Maharashtra, Swaraj was established under the leadership of Shivaji Maharaj. In his efforts to establish Swaraj, Shivaji Maharaj had to fight the Mughals too along with the other enemies. Aurangzeb came down to the Deccan after the death of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj with the intention of conquering the whole of South India. But the Marathas offered stiff resistance to Aurangzeb and defended their independence. We shall study this struggle later on.